Right now, we got a big heavyweight championship uh, fight to talk about across the pond. Anthony Joshua, Alexander Usyk. And for that dissection, uh, take it away, Amber. Very fun one, as we have two former Olympic gold medalists from the same Olympics, 2012. So right now in this fight, Anthony Joshua is a sizable favorite, minus 270, meaning you'd have to bet $270 on him just to win 100. Usyk, who was the undisputed cruiserweight champion, he is plus 230 a $100 bet on him would get you $230. I'll ask you each, starting with Smitty, who are you picking to win and why? Uh, I'm going to go with AJ simply because a, a, a good big man, or in this case, a great big man, uh, beats a great smaller man. Uh, both fighters are very good fighters. They have that tremendous pedigree, as you mentioned, but you got a guy going, you know, way up in Usyk. And uh, if he can't get the attention uh, of AJ, if he can't gain the respect of AJ, I think Josh will, will be too much. I expect it. For, there could be a late stoppage, but I, I think it'll be decision. But I like uh, Joshua. What about you, Lee? Well, I, I'm picking Joshua as well. And, and there are a few reasons. First, Joshua is 31 years old while Usyk is 34. And yes, fighters tend to age better these days, but if, if I'm a fighter, I'd still rather be 31 than 34, okay? Um, second reason, Joshua will have a three inch height advantage and he'll have a four inch reach advantage. And this is something that Usyk is not used to. At cruiserweight, he was the taller guy with the longer arms and now the tables are being turned on him. How's he going to handle the uncertainty? How will he adjust to that? Third, Joshua will have an enormous advantage in punching power. And here's a, here's a stat to back that up. AJ has the second highest knockout ratio in history among men who have won the heavyweight championship, uh, widely recognized. And the guy who's number one is Deontay Wilder. Usyk, at cruiserweight, he was an okay hitter. He had seven title fights, he had three knockouts, but he'll have even less power at heavyweight and he'll be, fight, he'll be punching at a bigger man. The fourth reason is that Joshua will have a significant weight advantage. In his last fight, he weighed 240 and three quarters. Usyk scaled one, uh, 217 and a quarter. That's 23 and a half pounds. And that's the difference roughly between a flyweight and a lightweight. Just imagine that. Fifth, Usyk is coming off the second longest layoff of his career, 329 days. That's only seven days shorter than the longest in his career. So for a guy who is so dependent on his speed and timing, this isn't great because ring rust, how's he going to adjust to that? And finally, the fight is taking place in Tottenham, England and not the Ukraine. And if AJ doesn't have enough advantages, he's got the home ring advantage. All right. Well, some people may not want to bet Joshua based on simply who's going to win because you have to bet a lot to win a little. So if they do want to maybe put a little bit of money on the underdog Usyk, how do you each think Usyk could pull this win off? Smitty, you first. Well, you know, one of the things and about the only thing that Lee didn't mention was the fact that, uh, Usyk is a very educated southpaw, has a tremendous right jab. And I think if I, when I read some stuff that Lee put out, uh, that he throws even more jabs than AJ does. He's very accurate with it. Um, he really can box. And if he can develop a rhythm and really get that right jab going, um, I think it could bode well for him because AJ, after the Ruiz knockout, what we've seen from him is a more safety conscious fighter a more thinking fighter and a more thinking fighter, a more cerebral fighter uh, might really bode well for Usyk, who's a hell of a boxer, uh, might even might even be a better boxer, pure boxer than Joshua. So I think the, the fact that uh, Joshua has, again, a, a, you know, sort of abandoned somewhat his power and is going up against a, a southpaw, uh, all of that stuff mixed in there. <laughs> If Usyk can get off to a really good start, I think that would really help him in trying to pull off an upset. And I think that vulnerability that we saw with Joshua in that knockout loss is what 
may have people considering thinking about Usyk. Now, Lee, talk about Usyk's jab because Smitty had mentioned it, but also Joshua has a tremendous jab as far as efficiency, correct? He, he does. He's, he's only one of two fighters among CompuBox's uh, categorical leaders who landed 30% of his jabs or more. The only other fighter is Triple G. And as dark a picture as I painted for Usyk in the last uh, block, I think I can paint a pretty bright picture for Usyk in this block. Uh, here's some of the reasons he could win. First, he is left-handed. And Joshua has only faced one southpaw in his entire career. And that's when he faced Charles Martin in April 2016. That's when he first won the heavyweight championship. The bad news for Usyk was that AJ knocked Martin out in two rounds. But the good news was that Joshua was a much more predatory fighter back then than he is now. Second, Usyk, Usyk's average punch output is much higher than that of Joshua. In fact, almost twice as much. So if he can avoid the big bombs early, he can flood the zone with punches and force AJ to think more about defense than offense, which in turn would cause AJ's already low punch output to go even further down. And that, in effect, could allow Usyk to win those swing rounds on activity alone. A lot of judges put punch output as a priority to who wins the close rounds. Third, even though Usyk has bulked up a bit, he's still likely to have the faster hands and the quicker feet, and he'll give AJ angles that he's not used to seeing, and he might also deliver a punch AJ won't see. Now, you, uh, Vladimir Klitschko and Andy Ruiz proved that Joshua's chin is not the greatest, and we all know that the punch that can knock you out is often the one that you don't see, and Usyk has plenty of hand speed. Here's another one. Both men throw more jabs than power punches, which you don't normally see at heavyweight. If Usyk can draw Joshua into a thinking man's fight instead of a bomb-throwing war, if he can get AJ into the later rounds, and if he can mess with Joshua's confidence in doing so, the pressure on AJ in front of his home fans could increase exponentially. Uh, and he and we know that he didn't deal with pressure very well when he fought Ruiz in New York. He wasn't very, you know, he was getting more of a bargain than he uh, expected, and he folded. So maybe Usyk can make history repeat itself if everything falls right for him. Finally, and this could be the biggest uh, biggest advantage for him. Usyk is one of boxing's greatest road warriors. And get this: in his championship fights at cruiserweight. He beat a Polish fighter in Poland. He beat an American fighter in the U.S. He beat a German-based Serb in Germany. He beat a Latvian in Latvia, a Russian in Russia, and he has already beaten a Brit in Great Britain in Tony Bellew. So if he's already beaten a Brit in Great Britain, who's to say he can't do it again? With what you've said and him being the smaller man and perhaps trying to be the more tactical fighter, I would think that if Usyk is to win, it would be by decision. Those odds at Station Casinos are plus 350, so $100 bet to win 350. You are both picking AJ, though, and I want you to tell me by what method of victory. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, I think, I think that the way that AJ wins, the method that he wins... Uh, the way he fights will determine whether it's going to be a decision win or a stoppage win. What AJ, if he gets off to a good start, if he fights like a big man, a little bit more, uh, like Lee was saying, the way he used to fight, more predatorial, uh, I think he can get the stoppage. If he never allows Usyk to, to come forward, if he keeps him on the back foot and right away establishes, hey, I'm you haven't fought anybody like me, not with this kind of power, then I think constantly Usyk will be on the back foot. That could lend to a late stoppage by AJ. Having said that, with this new Anthony Joshua, uh, I, I think he's already in his mind halfway out of boxing, which is dangerous. He's got all the money he'll ever need. I don't even know if he, I guess the one fight he might want would be a, a fight with, with Fury. But uh, I just think that it'll be a decision win for uh, Joshua, I wouldn't be surprised if, if he scores a knockdown or two, but 
that would be it. And again, if there's any way that Usyk can hurt him, if Usyk can hurt him, then I think it's you know it's a pick'em fight. But I just don't see it, and I, I think uh, Joshua wins a a decision. So decision is plus two twenty five for Joshua. The shortest odds among method of victory is Joshua by KO. It's actually the only minus on the board, minus one twenty five. So that's what the odds makers think is going to happen. Lee, what do you think? How do you think Joshua will win this fight? I agree with Smitty. I think AJ is going to win on points. I think he's going to control distance with his jab. Uh, and he will hit Usyk hard enough to persuade him that if he decides to engage with him, he's going to lose by KO. And, uh, you know, to me, Usyk only has one way to win. Outbox AJ uses speed, uses legs, uses angles, and hope he wins enough rounds to win a decision in AJ's home country, which in my opinion, he's got to win eight rounds clearly. Uh, AJ has two to win. He can win by knockout or he can win on points. He has the power advantage for sure, but he has shown he can also dominate a fight with his jab. Just take a look at the Ruiz rematch. Amber, well, who, you, Amber who do you win. like? Who are you picking, Amber? AJ, and I would say by decision based on the level of uh, caution he has shown in his recent fight since the Ruiz fight and based on him being the bigger guy. So yeah, I see him winning by decision and that's plus 225. So you get plus money there. Whereas the books are saying they think minus 125, he wins by KO. Usyk by KO is plus 600. So six to one odds and then a draw plus 1800. I don't expect to see that happen. But since you bring up the jab so much, what typically happens when you have a Southpaw and an Orthodox fighter who both have good jabs. Yeah, usually the jab, you know, kind of nullifies the jab. So what you're going to have Even is, a, is a boring, I, I'm nodding my head because it's going, I, I think it's going to be a chess match. I think it lends for a, a boring fight, a very, not for me, a purist and Lee, it's going to be very strategic. It's going to be very much like a chess match. It's not going to be what, I think is going to be a crowd pleaser, a barn burner, a peer sixer. There's going to be a lot of thought process and who's going to be estab establish the ring and command of the ring, which is ring generalship and, and control yeah. the landscape. And, and again, that's why I like the bigger man who also, again, can box. But uh, I, I think I'm looking for what is going to be a very strategic fight, probably, folks, a dull fight with two really good fighters. Lee, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. It's going to be a scientific fight. Both of them are intelligent, cerebral fighters. Uh, I think that Smitty is right when he says that uh, that the jabs are negated when a right-hander goes up against the southpaw because the hand that they can block both of their jabs. So that's another reason why I give AJ an edge because he has the longer arms and he can dictate distance. He'll be better able to land the jab. Usyk has to come in into the cannons of AJ in order to get close enough to score. That's a scary thing for him. Out of curiosity, when you have two guys in the same stance who are both good at jabbing, what happens? Well, you know, you jab with a jab, or if somebody has an advantage, what you'd want to do like Kenny Norton did with Ali is you, you don't hook with a hooker, but you jab with a jabber. And again, what it does is it leads to a lot of posturing who can get off first and then you apply who can, then that's when you want to be able to do like, for example, what Canelo does so well, faint and other things to, to have a guy throw the jab and miss and then counter. It gets kind of, gets kind of technical. Mm -hmm. All right. So it does to the same effect, a Southpaw versus an Orthodox fighter, the jab negates each other. Yes. You know, what, one of the things I wanted because when, when, when and we were, we're going to add a, a sponsor to this, to this segment in the near future, Amber, you've been doing something pretty cool for, I didn't realize how much I had forgotten about gaming and betting and gambling and odds and all that. And you've come up with a something maybe for dummies, uh, you know, like me or people who've forgotten. And, and, and why don't you plug that for people who might want to learn how to get into this, that uh, you've been putting out some sort of tutorials. Right. Via TikTok at Sports Betting Basics and also on YouTube. So Amber Dixon, YouTube. Uh, talking about the basics, what is a favorite? What is an underdog? How do you determine which is which? Because 
an underdog has a plus sign in front of them. To me, I've always associated plus with something positive. So wouldn't that be next to the favorite? But no, it's the opposite. And how do you determine what amount of money you're going to win? I mean, you can't just bet the favorite because you're going to have to bet more money to win less money. That's why there's an attractive way to bet on the underdog as well. But uh, just a couple more prop bets here. You touched on- Not as exciting as our OnlyFans page, ladies and gentlemen, but, it, but it's pretty cool. I don't have one of those. <laughs> and I heard though that they got a lot of backlash when they announced that they're not going to allow explicit content. And so now they're allowing it again. What do you look at? Yeah, they reverse course. What, what do I look like? The expert on- Yes, the only... expert. You brought it up. Okay, so really? sweetie, you said- if AJ wins by, well, if he gets a stoppage, it would be in the later round. So over under the total is set at nine and a half rounds. Uh, it is the over that's the favorite, but only at uh, minus 130. So bet $130 to win 100 that this will go over nine and a half rounds. If you think it'll go under, it's plus 110. You think, what do you think of that? range for round well, i think if there is going to be a stoppage it would i think you know boxing's the theater of the unexpected it would be aj and i would think it would be um you know in those what is now termed the championship rounds you know 11 and, and, and 12 i think it would be super duper late because Usyk's one hell of a fighter and i know he's going to be supremely fit and he's really really so it would be something after round 10 as far as Usyk, I, I just think it would be uh, something that AJ wouldn't see. And I, and I, I just would stay away from, I would stay away well, from and that. And you but don't think, even have to, because this is just based on how many rounds it goes. So uh, I think after 10, moving, after round 10. After round 10, so you'd go over. What about you, Lee? I, I do as well. And when I was thinking about this, uh, this question that she asked, the number that I said was round 10 and the number is, is nine and a half. So <laughs> we got it pegged pretty good. I, I think it will happen late because it's going to take AJ time to adjust to Usyk's speed and southpaw stance. I think it's also going to take time to wear him down and to chase him down. So I think if a KO is going to occur, it'll probably be happening around the 10th, maybe the 11th round. Okay. And if you want to get even more, perhaps win more money, you can pick the exact round. The shortest odds are plus 1,000 round seven or eight. But... Mm -hmm. If you're going with like what you said, Lee, round 10 is plus 4,500. Smitty, round 11 plus 5,000. Round 12 plus 6,000. So you stand to make more money if you get the exact round right. That makes me think of when I picked Bernard Hopkins uh, to – Bernard's done well for me. I picked him the exact round that he knocked out Trinidad. I think that was round 12. Of their fight, and I, and I think I also called the exact round when he landed that body shot to Oscar, which I think was round nine, Lee, maybe when he stopped Oscar with a body shot. Yeah, it was in round nine, yeah. It's been a while since I nailed one of those correctly, but uh, yeah, uh, I, 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 but again, I think if if AJ gets it, it'll be 10, 11, 12. And I know both of you have said that it may be a boring fight, and I can see that too with two guys jabbing who are so. Uh, they're both cerebral, wouldn't you think? Especially they are. They're both very smart. Right. Yeah. You don't. Um, and you don't see that. Usually, one guy will really have an advantage in that, in terms of you know the the mindset, the boxing mind. And on this one, these are both high high level uh, guys in in terms of the, the way they. Weight. I mean, they're both gold medalists, and you know they're and you don't usually see that. And that's why, again, you've got two guys that are almost in many ways you know, dead even, we could break down little things that we already have, but it's one guy's just naturally a lot bigger. And as much as I hate to go with bigger men, because I truly dominate bigger men myself, most of the time, I got to go with the bigger guy. Well, and you know, what's interesting is some of what I've read is that Usyk has tried to bulk up. Joshua has done the opposite. He's tried to be slim and quicker, but I think Point. for Usyk, Usyk to bulk up, it might slow him down and he may not be able to execute as well what he's best at. Yeah, Lee, that's I know you were trick. talking about that to me earlier this week. That That's the trick. That's the trick that Usyk has to find. He has to find that magic, that magic balance, that magic weight. He needs that snack. Will, he needs snack. That will enhance his power and yet retain his speed. 
Uh, AJ, he could weigh 250 and still be a powerful guy. But, uh, you know, that 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 two six puzzle and we'll see at the weigh in. I'm very interested to see what the number is. I bet it will be a kind of boring fight, but then out of nowhere, I bet there might be a knockdown, you know, a real quick flash knockdown. Someone Could lands on, on the chin. And, 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 and Usyk doesn't have a lot of experience getting hit by guys as big and as powerful, you know, as, as AJ. And, and although Deontay Wild, Wilder has better one punch power, I still think if all the heavyweights in the world, you know, all the heavyweight title holders fought at their best, in one night, I think AJ's the best of them. Oof. Perhaps if that uh, Fury and Joshua fight happens. Last thing before I hand it back over to you, Smitty, you had mentioned about Joshua maybe being at the end of his career, toward the end of his career, and I think that lends itself to him maybe playing it more cautious, right? Yeah, I, I, I think so. And I, Kurt, and I think I think Andy Ruiz had a lot to do with that too. Ah. You know, getting getting knocked out like that, and of course. Uh, by the way, with AJ, um, he's got he's always gotten up, even when he got really severely hurt by Klitschko a few times. He got up. He got up with AJ. You could make an argument that he could have continued. Um, mm. So he does get up. And those are from much, much more prodigious punchers than Usyk. Klitschko, <laughs> even at the end of his career, hit harder than Usyk ever will. And and Ruiz uh, has really big power in, in both hands. And He's quick-handed, fast-handed, so uh, he, I don't think AJ has to worry about that, but they are heavyweights, although one guy's a legitimate heavyweight. And I think I said KO loss earlier. I didn't mean it KO like he got knocked out. It was a stoppage, both of, yeah. right, yeah, or the time, his one loss, right? He only has one loss. One loss. Yeah, one one loss. Ruiz, but did get knocked down by Klitschko. Yes. Yes. Anyway, though, but the last thing is that today I saw Eddie Hearn announce that Joshua has signed a rest of his life agreement with Eddie mm, Hearn in matchroom boxing. So the rest of his career is in matchroom's hands. And I thought, well, who knows how much longer his career is going to go anyway. Yeah, I, I don't know about these lifelong contracts in uh, in any sport, in any realm of life. And certainly not in boxing.